Hello, Linwin Friends Church. We're continuing to seek ways to make online church better and better. And while we're not together, we wanted to make this Mother's Day special.
Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, <clears throat> and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and, through the Spirit, predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day. Look, I get it. No good mom gets into the whole motherhood program for the sake of the accolades. But, you know, it's good for the rest of us. It's good for us and it's nice to just say thank you and that we appreciate you. And so happy Mother's Day and to my mom, thank you. I really appreciate you and you know you're obviously a great mom because you made a great kid well at least one out of three didn't mean for this to necessarily be about me certainly about uh moms today and i think one of the reasons it's really good to have a mother's day is because we see at work an almost universal principle that the everyday kind of things just don't get noticed. I mean, we know the old adage that we're going to hear the story of man bites dog and not the story of dog bites man, just because it's different. And fortunately, in a lot of cases, we have a lot of moms who really love their kids and sacrifice for their kids. And there's not a lot of stories necessarily about that, unless there's something extreme, something uh, really different unless we just set aside some time and set aside some attention and just say we appreciate this and we are thankful for this we notice you so once again happy Mother's Day the thing is, is that principles probably been pretty good uh, for us to push against for a little bit now with the whole COVID restrictions that we've been having it's kind of come to our attention how necessary the unnamed participants are in our world. We love it, live in such an interrelated way that the individuals who are doing things that sometimes just go unnoticed and certainly maybe they go unnamed and we begin to appreciate them. Whether it's, you know, grocery store employees, you know, putting product on shelves and we get a renewed sense of, wow, you know, we really count on them. Um, I've really appreciated as the husband of a nurse, uh, some of the attention that's been paid towards nurses and the difficult job uh, that they have and being thankful for them. I was particularly pleased as well as uh, seeing a local hospital that their nurses and others, medical staff specifically also took some attention towards the other people, the, uh, the administrative staff, the janitors, the others who help support them and help them do their job. So kind of pushing that appreciation down the line because it's so easy to just go about and not notice kind of the everyday sacrifices, the everydayness of people and what they're doing that can have a major impact on our lives. And as the text we had heard this morning, it actually can have an impact for eternity. 
You may have noticed, you recognize this passage starts off. We are continuing our series in Acts, and uh, we kind of go back. We, we looked at Stephen when he was stoned, and Paul was there. His name was Saul at the time, and uh, a lot of the Christians, after seeing him martyred and killed, took off uh, away from Jerusalem and Judea, trying to avoid some of the persecution that was they were experiencing at the hands of Jewish authorities. Jewish authorities continued to pursue them and try to capture them and arrest them, uh, among other things. And then we went to a story for a while about Cornelius and Saul, and we are now, the beginning of the text lets us know, we're heading back to talking about those Christians that were kind of had their Christian diaspora. They were spread out in other areas from where they had originated. And there's a lot of unnamed pioneers, those that went out and, and began to make a difference in the life of uh, fellow Jews to help them see and tell the story of who Jesus is and that, they, that he is the Christ and the Messiah. Uh, and then we begin to see, as we're seeing in Acts, the movement towards opening the kingdom of God up, so to speak, to the Gentiles as well. I mean, the kingdom was already opened before, but we're seeing more of this tension. Do you, do you have to be Jewish to be Christian? We're going to see more of that. But we certainly see those who are not Jewish begin to hear the gospel, hear the story of Jesus, and respond as the Spirit directs them to join up. Now, where we're also going to pick up this text is, and we don't hear, I mean, they're unnamed. We don't hear about these pioneers. We don't know much about them, but it goes into a spotlight on one in particular, and that's Barnabas. Barnabas is mentioned a number of times in Acts, very little elsewhere in Scripture, as he mentioned a few times in some of Paul's letters. But, uh, you know, we don't see any major writings from him. There, there was a, a book called The Writings of Barnabas that we're pretty confident were not actually written by Barnabas. Uh, however, we're getting a little spotlight on just this everyday, supremely important guy. And he's important precisely because he is living out his faith every day. We have said over and over that Linwood French Church, that we exist to love God, to love one another, and live out faith every day. And we're seeing him do that in ways that are small, but important, and have lasting impact. And I suspect you and I would like to have those kind of lives too. Most of us are probably not going to be incredibly famous. Most of us are not going to have lots of stuff written about us and, and talked about, and it's quite possible we will be, well, forgotten. I mean, I know that sounds horrible because we want to leave a legacy and we want to leave something that matters. But I was uh, looking at pictures uh, the other day. I was thinking about my grandfather, uh, Hank, we called him uh, Grandpa Hank, and uh, Heinrich was actually his name. He came over from Germany in the 20s uh, with his family. He was, a, he was a young boy, found a picture of him online that, that of him and uh, his mom when they were very young and actually still in Germany. And uh, I love my grandpa. And he was a big burly man. Uh, he worked on the railroad. He was a conductor. And I have lots of fond memories of him. He died when I was in college. And uh, the truth is, is my kids never met him. They don't know him. Uh, I don't know, frankly, whether any of my kids could even tell me his name. I mentioned the picture that I saw had my grandfather with his mother in there. I had forgotten his mother's name, my great grandmother. We called her Oma, uh, German for grandma, uh, for when I was young, but she had died when I was really young and I had forgotten her name and, and I definitely don't know her parents' names. So how many generations before we don't even know their names? It may be written down somewhere and somebody may pursue it, but really their life and their story, if it's about somebody remembering it, that's not gonna be enough. I suspect my grandkid, maybe my great-grandkids, my great-great-grandkids, 
if I'm lucky enough to have them, may not even know who I am, know much about me. But if the, the chance is that maybe there's a way to have a legacy that we pour into people so it matters. And I think that's exactly what scripture is showing us. Here is Barnabas. And we see that his life matters and it mattered in the way that he connected with people and he encouraged people and he discipled people. And I think it's certainly worth emulating. Hearing the stories, to use the Rich Mullen song, stories of the saints of old, stories about their faith, stories like that can help us grow bold. Stories like that can help us walk straight. So as I look at Barnabas, there are three things that really come to mind about him that are worth emulating. The first is that Barnabas shows up. So there's this movement that's happening in Antioch. I wish I could get a graphic up here that would show a map, and maybe you can certainly look at that, but you can see that what a traveler was. If you think about the Mediterranean Sea, I'm gonna to try to do this from your perspective. Over in the uh, southeast of the Mediterranean Sea off the, would be uh, Jerusalem and Judea. And you'd have to travel very far up the coast to the northeast section of the Mediterranean Sea to get to Antioch, where Barnabas was willing to go. Barnabas traveled a very long distance, and tra which wasn't easy. It's not like he could hop on a plane to get there to, be, to find out what's going on in Antioch and what's happening with uh, those who are becoming believers. He was willing to make that trip. He ends up making another trip. As he see, he hears about Saul and he's willing to go out and be side by side in ministry with this guy. And he goes over another hundred miles up from Antioch over to Tarsus and then brings him back to be able to work and minister side by side with him. And I tell you, I think there's something incredibly valuable about just showing up. You know, when certainly making the sacrifice and big things when huge important events come and you're willing to, to make, again, a lot of sacrifices to show up in somebody's life, it really matters. But even in the small ways, I think it can matter. One of my favorite images from fiction is from the Lord of the Rings. And there is a video. I've talked about this before in sermons and was unable to show it. I'm not gonna be able to splice it into this video, but I'm hoping, put it up here, that I will be able to put it, a link to it right here, a YouTube version. So I'm gonna encourage you, if we can pull this off, I'm gonna pause for a little bit, click on this and look at it. Uh, you know what, before you do, let me set it up. And to set it up, I wanna tell you, uh, what's going on is is there is it's the Battle of Helm Deep, and the king has done everything they can to get the orc invaders off, and yet they're getting closer and closer, and they're going farther and farther, and it's at the moment when all hope is lost. At the bottom of the pile, and it looks pretty inevitable what's going to happen. And at that moment, they, uh, Aragorn says, hey, you know what? Let's go out. Let's go out swinging. Um, don't just huddle in here and let's go. And so you see kind of this bravery in this tragic moment. It's a great image. The music uh, pops up as the, these folks start to take off and say, we are going to go out swinging. And then thinking about three minutes and 21 seconds into this clip, you're gonna see something. So if you wanna pause and come back to this moment, and click and watch it, that would be great. I'll give you a few seconds. Hope you watched it. When he says there that, uh, you know, your king is alone, and the writers of Rohan say, not alone. How powerful and wonderful it is when, certainly when you feel like you're at the bottom of a pile, when you are struggling deeply, when you are carrying a burden, to just have somebody show up, put their hand on your shoulder and say, you're not alone. When we take very important and difficult steps of faith, when we wanna learn 
how to do ministry, when we want to grow and we figure out. And that's really, in many ways, what we as a church are called to, folks, is to help we, one another live life not alone and to help us figure out how we go forward together. Barnabas is certainly worth emulating in this. Think another thing about uh, Barnabas that's really worth noting is that he celebrates. Barnabas type people are willing to celebrate and encourage others. You know, he know he sees what's happening and he sees the good. I'm I'm guessing as you look at a lot of the letters that Paul later writes to others and you see early churches that they don't have things all figured out. And there's a lot of correction and a lot of work needed. Uh, we even see in Revelation, for example, uh, when Jesus has these letters to the churches, here's some good things that are going on, here's some difficult things, and here's what I encourage you to do, that, that things aren't all perfect, but specifically Barnabas looks and sees, and he's glad, and he uses that time to encourage one another, others. Folks, I think it is worth our effort to learn to be joyful and glad and to celebrate the successes we see. Some of you may be more cynical, that it's easier for you to see the negative and see the things that aren't right and see the things that don't quite measure up and, and maybe even look and see how other people are doing it better or, and, and, and you're hypercritical. But one of the things I think we are really, really called to is to be able to celebrate the goodness we see, to celebrate the work of what God is doing in other people's lives not measured against what we think they should be doing, how great, but just these movements at all. And I think being Barnabas type people, which is certainly our goal, means not only showing up and being willing to celebrate and encourage and, you know, I got a letter this past week. I don't want to embarrass anybody, so I won't tell you it's from Valerie, but who wrote me a letter just to say thank you just to, and that kind of encouraging now showing up in this COVID environment is a little tough, but I tell you those, that's just yet another example. And over the years, I've received numerous texts and words of encouragement and things that, that really keep me going. And I tell you, can I tell you a secret? When I get those notes, I put them in a folder. I put them in a folder and I have them in my office. And so every now and then when I get a little discouraged, when things are a little tough, I literally pick that up and I start reading through. So a lot of the notes and letters that people have sent me over the years, I look at them to help me be encouraged. And I, and I want to tell you, those words can mean a lot. And so I think it is worth our time and effort to be glad, encouraging, celebratory people that see the good in others and want more of that. This isn't just a list of a couple of things that if you can just get right, it's really good. I mean, it is that, there is a list, but it's more than just that. You see, the third point I really think is important for us to point out about Barnabas is that he prioritized a relationship with God. He was a man of character, he was a man of faith, and the Holy Spirit was with him that that, that was important to him. I, I know that there are those who may be watching this video. There are some that come to our church uh, during services that aren't Christian and say, well, you know, I, I, I'll go through the, the sermon. I'll hear the words even of scripture. I'll get it. And, and you know, there's some really good advice that even as a Christian, non-Christian, I can, I can use and that'll be good. I mean, it'll be good for me to be the person who shows up to things. It'll be good for me to be this one who celebrates and encourages others. And that will be good. But I believe the real reason that Barnabas was able to have a really lasting impact was not just because he did good things, but that he did them at the direction of God himself. That if there is indeed a God who loves us and cares for us, who died for our sins and longs to redeem and transform the world by, long, by redeeming and transforming us as individuals, then the plans that he has and the direction he gives are going to be really important. You see, the truth is sometimes even these desires, these goals we have, compete with one another. You know, we want to show up. And I probably didn't mention as well as I could what showing up might mean. You know, it can certainly mean showing up to somebody's celebration. It can mean showing up 
at a church gathering. It can mean showing up at a neighborhood association, that there is a reason that we should just be present and show up. And you can say, well, okay, I, I would be happy to do that. But sometimes those things compete with other things. You can't, it's hard to show up at your job that has an event at the same time your church has an event at the same time uh, you could spend time with your family and those, all of those count as showing up. Which one do we do? Anybody who says they have an easy answer of which one takes priority, I have to be honest, I, I don't believe you. I, I don't think you've thought it through because there are times when, yeah, we definitely go to work because that's what we need to do. And other times when it's like, no, we need to sacrifice and spend time with our family. Another time, maybe we need to show up for our community and our neighborhood. We, and we do those things. And, and how do we differentiate? And I tell you that one of the best ways we have is if we can really do our best to respond to the Spirit of God. I feel like it begs the question a little bit because there are a number of us who are really young in our faith and it's like, well, how do, how do I hear from God which one of those I do? And that is a longer story and there's more about that and I'm, we've had sermons about it before and we'd love to talk about it again. But I have to tell you what I'm really trying to get at today is the idea that that should be our question. Which of these does God really want of us? Am I prioritizing my relationship? I have talked each week for the past couple of weeks about prioritizing times of prayer. I was going through a devotion this past week and I had somebody had made the comment, I don't know how they would know this, but they are saying that there has been a renewed interest for a lot of us in these COVID restrictions that uh, of a renewed sense of a desire to be people of prayer and people of scripture and people that that interact more closely with God. And I hope that has been the case for you. And I, I tell you, if you're willing to put that first and do your best to hear what God has for you, to get your marching orders from the Lord, to be able to get a real sense of what it means to be a person of character and integrity and working to be the person that God wanted you to be, that God died on the cross for to, to redeem you and to help you achieve and put you on that trajectory that he longs for you. It's in that place that you're showing up matters. It's in that place that your encouragement matters and that it can matter for all of eternity. I think Barnabas is certainly worth uh, emulating. And in many ways, I have to tell you, I think the best mothers are doing those kind of things, showing up, encouraging and being glad and prioritizing their relationship with God. Let's pray together. Gracious and heavenly Father God, I thank you once again for uh, the mothers among us who, who did these very things, who showed us what it meant to follow you, who showed up in our lives and encouraged us and celebrated us. I wanna thank you not only again for my own mother, but I thank you for my wife who is a mother to our kids and uh, celebrates and encourages and shows up for them. And I wanna pray uh, for all those who are in the throes right now of trying to live that reality out, either as a mother or a parent or a friend or whatever, Lord, that you would continue to bless them and encourage them and guide them. And Lord, I can't help but be aware that there are many among us who are in desperate need right now of a friend, desperate need of a mother type, desperate need of a Barnabas in their life. Lord, I would ask two things. One, that you really do spark within us to go out and be your hands and feet and to be the miracle that they've been praying for. But I pray for a strength and an extra pouring of your spirit to sustain them as it takes a while for people to respond as you have asked them to. For them to love deeply, not only their fellow in need, but frankly, to love you, Lord enough to do what you command and to make a difference that lasts for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. As always, I ask you to pray for me and I'll keep praying for you.